a very good evening aspirants we are happy to bring to your attention that shankar ias academy is launching two initiatives for the benefit of aspirants in the mains exam preparation you all are aware about the mains booster 2023 under which you will be provided 40 mains oriented test in 90 days the booster is a quick plan drafted for you to boost your main score it starts on october 31st and will include sectional test half papers and civil service examination emulators it is available in both online and offline modes for just 4500 rupees on top of that we are launching a new initiative called sa augmentar 2023 Under this initiative you will be provided with four test to enhance your essays it is also available in both online and offline modes you will get a different approach towards essay writing along with pre essay and post essay discussions to further enhance the content of essays you will be provided with a summarized essay material combined with mentorship all these for just 6000 rupees grab this chance to kick start your mains exam preparation and improve the main score with this note now let's get into the hindu news analysis for the date 21st of october 2022 Displayed here are the list of articles that we are going to discuss today. You can go through it. Without much delay, let's get into the discussion. Take a look at this news article. It reports that Competition Commission of India has levied a penalty of rupees thousand three hundred thirty eight crore against Google. For better understanding of the issue, let me explain the background. See, the operating system Android is owned by Google. Majority of our phones has Android as its operating system. Google, as the owner of Android system, made sure the mandatory pre-installation of entire Google Mobile Suite on the mobile phones operating on Android OS. The Competition Commission of India taking cognizance of the issue, and it has concluded that the prominent placement of Google apps in the Android ecosystem amounted to the imposition of unfair condition on the device manufacturers. So this is the crux of the news article given here. In this context, let's learn about the Competition Commission of India. See, the Competition Commission of India is a statutory body under the Ministry of Corporate Affairs. Know that the commission was established in October 2003 by the provisions of Competition Act 2002. Here, note that the act follows the philosophy of modern competition laws and it prohibits anti-competitive agreements. abuse of dominant position by enterprises which causes an appreciable adverse effect on competition within india to appreciate the role played by the competition commission of india first we have to understand the significance of competition in an aspiring economy like india see competition is the best means of ensuring that the common man or aam aadmi has access to the broadest range of goods and services at the most competitive prices with increased competition producers will have maximum incentive to innovate and specialize This would result in reduced costs and wider choice to customers. A fair competition in market is essential to achieve this objective. So, Competition Commission of India functions with clear mandate of creating and sustaining fair competition in the economy that will provide a level playing field to the producers, which will ultimately result in market working for the welfare of the consumers. Here, note that Competition Commission of India aims to establish a robust competitive environment through proactive engagement with all stakeholders. including consumers industry government and international jurisdictions competition commission of india also tries to be a knowledge intensive organization with high competence level ensuring professionalism transparency resolve and wisdom in enforcement an important fact to note here is that monopolies and restrictive trade practices act 1969 was repealed and replaced by the competition act 2002 on the recommendations of raghavan committee now moving on to see the composition of a commission it consists of a chairperson and six other members appointed by the central government on talking about their qualifications the chairperson and every other member should be a person of ability integrity special knowledge and professional experience of not less than 15 years in areas like international trade economics business commerce law finance accountancy management industry public affairs or competition matters including competition law and policy know that both chairperson and other members will be appointed by the central government based on the recommendations of a selected committee headed by the chief justice of india or his nominee the other members of the selection committee include the secretary in the ministry of corporate affairs and the secretary in the ministry of law and justice here note that the members of the selection committee include the secretaries of respective ministries and not the ministers apart from them two experts possessing special knowledge and professional experience are also a part of the committee also know that the chairperson and every other member of the team hold office for a team of 5 years provided they have not attained the age of 65 and they are eligible for reappointment 
in case of a vacancy caused by the resignation or removal of the chairperson or any other member then the position shall be filled by fresh appointment based on the committee recommendations and in case of vacancy in the chairperson's office the senior most member shall act as the chairperson until the new person is chosen so this is all with respect to the competition commission of india through this discussion we learned about competition commission of india its mandate and all about the importance of competition in an economy with these learned points now let's move on to the next news article discussion let's take up this editorial article this editorial article while touching upon the recent report of the official language committee talks about the issues with the report the article also gives us some important points highlighting the merits of the use of english along with the hindi as the official language of our country so this is the crux of the news article so in this context in our today's discussion we will focus on the eighth schedule official language committee the recent report of the official language committee issues with the recommendations and finally some solutions to address the issue before that the syllabus relevant to this discussion is highlighted here for your reference kindly go through it first let's take the eighth schedule see the eighth schedule is mentioned in article 344 1 and article 355 of the constitution the article 344 1 provides for the constitution of a commission by the president on expiration of 5 years from the commencement of the constitution and thereafter every 10 years this commission will have a chairman and such other members representing the different language specified in the eighth schedule but here what are the different languages mentioned in the eighth schedule see currently there are 22 languages mentioned in the eighth schedule i have listed the 22 languages here you can go through it see initially there were only 14 languages mentioned in the eighth schedule later some languages were added to the schedule through subsequent constitutional amendments the latest being 92nd amendment act of 2003 which added bodo dogri maithili and santali to the list an additional point that you have to note here is that there is no fixed criteria for any language to be considered for inclusion in the eighth schedule now coming to article 351 article 351 gives the directive for the spread of hindi language in article 351 it is mentioned that steps must be taken to assimilate other languages mentioned in eighth schedule into the hindi language without interfering with the core of the hindi language this is about the eighth schedule now before looking at the official language committee that published the report that is mentioned in the editorial there is an official language commission mentioned in the constitution first let's see about the official language commission see part 17 of the constitution that includes article 343 to article 351 deals with the official language as i already mentioned article 344 deals with the official language commission so now let's see the functions of the commission firstly it is the duty of the commission to make recommendations to the president regarding the progressive use of hindi language for the official purposes of the union secondly the commission also makes recommendations to the president for the restriction of use of english language in the official business of the union thirdly the commission recommends to the president regarding what language shall be used in the supreme court high court and in acts and bills fourthly the commission also makes recommendations about the form of numerals to be used in the official business of the union finally the commission also deals with other matters referred by the president as regards the official language of the union and the language of communication between the union and the states these are the functions or duties of the official language commission one another thing you have to note here is that article 3443 mentions that the commission while making recommendations must give due regard to the interest of people belonging to the non hindi states mainly regarding public services so this is important point so note this down so this is about the official language commission and article 344 now moving on to see official language committee while the formation of an official language commission is mentioned in the constitution the official language committee is mentioned in section 4 of the official language act 1963 but why was the official language act passed article 343 of the constitution mentions that the official language of the union shall be hindi in devanagari script and article 3432 allows for the use of english along with hindi as the official language of the union for 15 years from commencement of constitution here article 343 mentions that after the end of 15 year period the parliament may by law provides for the extension of use of hindi language when the 15 year period mentioned in article 3432 was about to end the non hindi speaking states mainly the southern states were worried so to alleviate the fears of non hindi speaking states the parliament using the provisions of article 343 3 enacted the official language act 1963 here the section 3 of the official language act allowed for the continued use of english for the official purpose of the union the act came into force on 26 january 1965 now coming to section 4 of the official language act 
See the section 4 says that 10 years after official language act comes into effect a committee on official language shall be formed. This committee is formed by the resolution of the parliament. The committee on official language or the official language committee is a 30 member body. 20 members are from Lok Sabha and 10 members are from Raj Sabha. They are elected by the members of each house. The main duty of this committee is to review the progress made in the use of Hindi for the official purpose of the union. Here note the difference. The official language commission mentioned in the constitution make recommendation for the progress use of Hindi as the official language. But the official language committee reviews the progress made in the use of Hindi for the official purposes of the union. So kindly note the difference. Once the official language committee submits the report to the president, the president submits the report in both houses of parliament and then send it to all the states. The president after going through the report and taking into consideration the views expressed by the states issues direction in accordance with the whole or any part of that report. So basically it is mandatory for the president to act upon the report of the official language committee. So this is all about official language committee mentioned in section 4 of the official language act 1963. Now moving on let's look at the important recommendations mentioned in the 11th volume of the report of official language committee. The report says that Hindi should replace English as the language of examinations for recruitment to the government. This is the first major recommendation. Then it goes on to say that Hindi should be the only medium of instruction in Kendri Vidyalayas, Indian Institute of Technologies, Indian Institutes of Management and Central Universities. Finally, the report says that it should be constitutionally binding on state governments to propagate Hindi. Having seen the major recommendations, now let's see the issues with the recommendations. Firstly, if Hindi replaced English as the sole language for the recruitment of all India services, then candidates from the non-Hindi states the southern states in particular will face a great disadvantage when compared to those people whose mother tongue is Hindi. This recommendation will give unfair advantage to the people who have Hindi as their mother tongue in all their services and gradually eliminate the intake of people who do not speak Hindi. So this is the first issue. The second issue is regarding the legality of recommendation. Nowhere in the Official Language Act 1963 it is mentioned that the Official Language Committee has powers to recommend the medium of instruction in universities and professional institutions. The only power the committee possesses is to review the progress made in the use of Hindi for the official purpose of the union and report to the president. So this is the second issue. Thirdly, language is a complex issue. In the 1960s, there was a huge uproar in the southern states when the center tried to make Hindi as the sole official language. The Official Language Act 1963 was enacted to give confidence to the people of the south for the continued use of English along with Hindi. And we already saw about Article 3443 right which mentioned that due regard must be given for the interest of people of non-Hindi speaking states in public service. See the recommendations made by the Official Language Committee are against both Official Language Act and Article 3443. See if due respect is not given to the people who speak different languages then complex problems will emerge. See one of the main reasons for the breakup of Bangladesh from Pakistan was due to the imposition of Urdu on the Bangladeshis who mainly preferred Bengali. So the recommendations made by the committee might open up old wounds for the people of the south. So basically giving importance to one language or another language will affect the unity of our country. So this is the third major issue. Finally the recommendations ignores the role played by English. See Hindi is an Aryan language and all the southern languages are Devrian in origin. So English in our country act as a link between north and the south. In the constituent assembly Maulana Asad said the union of north and south has been made possible only through the medium of English. Note the point here. So the role played by English must be appreciated. In addition to this English is also a global language. Through English we Indians are able to connect with the world. One of the major reasons for the boom in the IT services in India is due to our familiarity with English. So these are all some of the issues with the recommendation. See all major changes must come from the grassroots. Our government instead of imposing Hindi must allow people to make their own decision. Even without government intervention people down south will learn Hindi in the next few decades. This is mainly due to the free movement of labor. When a person from Tamil Nadu moves to Delhi for work he will eventually pick up Hindi. Likewise when a person from UP when he moves to Tamil Nadu will help his co-worker pick up Hindi. So if the government just encourages free movement of people, the disposition of Hindi in India will be a natural process. In the meantime, the government must take steps to translate the knowledge in modern science, medicine and technology into the Indian language. This will help India in the long term. Finally, instead of imposing one nation one language, India can take example from Canada which has two official languages which are French and English. 
so that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw about eighth schedule of the indian constitution and then the official language commission and the official language committee and the recent recommendations of the official language committee and the issues and finally the possible solutions with these key points in mind now let's move on to the next news article discussion see this article here it says that tamil nadu government has increased the spot fines for traffic violations this is done in line with the amendments made by the central government in the motor vehicles act of 1988 in 2019 which enhanced the fine amount for traffic violations so this is the crux of the news article given here in this context let us understand about the motor vehicles amendment act 2019 first of all let's see why such amendment was needed see with every step towards increased urbanization it is evident that the traffic on roads has increased nowadays each household in almost every city or town has at least one motor vehicle with this increasing traffic on roads the probability of accident also increases and what do you think is the reason for such high number of accidents see the reasons are many negligent and rash driving dishonoring the traffic rules unavailability of an efficient enforcement mechanism inefficient traffic police force etc they are all the reasons why such accidents are happening so the motor vehicles act was amended recently to address this only know that this act majorly aims at ensuring road safety compensation for the victims of accidents third party insurance and the health of the vehicles now coming to the basis of the act see the motor vehicles amendment act 2019 came into effect on 1st september 2019 this amendment act made the rules more stringent for offenders and more importantly this amendment has made it difficult for those in the habit of breaking traffic rules Now let's see some of the major amendments made in the Motor Vehicle Act one by one. First is compulsory insurance. The act requires the central government to constitute a motor vehicle accident fund. This is to provide compulsory insurance cover to all road users in India and this fund is utilized for several reasons such as treatment of persons injured in road accidents as per the Golden Horse scheme. Then compensation to representatives of a person who died in a hit and run accident. then compensation to a person grievously hurt in a hit and run accident and compensation to any other persons as prescribed by the central government and the next provision is national transportation policy it says that the central government may develop a national transportation policy in consultation with state governments the policy will establish a planning framework for road transport then develop a framework for grant of permits and specify priorities for the transport system and the next provision is the road safety board the act provides for a national road safety board to be created by central government through a notification the board will advise the central and state governments on all aspects of road safety and traffic management they include standards of motor vehicles registration and licensing of vehicles standards for road safety and the promotion of new vehicle technology and the next one is the definition of samaritan see the act defines a good samaritan as a person who renders emergency medical or non medical assistance to a victim at the scene of an accident this assistance must have been in good faith voluntary and without the expectation of any reward such a person will not be liable for any civil or criminal action for any injury to or death of an accident victim caused due to their negligence in providing assistance to the victim see this provision encourages people to take actions when needed And finally the act says that the central government will develop a scheme for cashless treatment of road accident victims during golden hour. The act defines golden hour as the time period of up to 1 hour following a traumatic injury during which the likelihood of preventing death through prompt medical care is the highest. So these are all some of the important provisions regarding motor vehicle amendment act 2019. That's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion we saw about the background of our such amendment act then some of the important provisions of the act with these key points in mind now let's move on to the next news article discussion take a look at this news article talks about the month long program organized by the union government to strengthen and rekindle the cultural and civilizational bond between tamil nadu and varanasi union education minister has said that the program will be held as a part of the ek bharat shrestha bharat initiative and is aimed at rekindling the civilizational link between tamil nadu and varanasi This is the crux of the news article given here in this context let us learn about Ek Bharat Shrestha Bharat initiative in detail see india is a diverse country with diversities in its geography religion culture and race 
Although the prevalent diversities, there is an element of interconnectedness between the citizens of India, which has been reflected in the cultural traditions of our society. To foster and to further develop this interconnectedness, Ek Bharat Shrestha Bharat scheme was launched in 31st October 2015 on the occasion of 140th birth anniversary of Sardar Vallabhai Patel. See, this was done to commemorate Sardar Patel for making sure India remained as a single nation during the difficult times of post-independence period. Here, the Ministry of Education has been designated as the nodal ministry for coordination of the program. The states and union territories perform activities in cohesion with the spirit of unity in diversity and showcase the activities which are reflected on the official website of Ek Bharat Shrestha Bharat. The activities are also publicized through different social media platforms, online publicity, print coverage, digital media, television and radio programs. See, the activities are performed to highlight special features of the paired state and to celebrate diversity of the cultural spectrum of our country. All states and union territories will be covered under the program. There will be pairing of states or union territories at national level and these pairings will be in effect for one year or till the next round of pairings. The state or union territory level pairings would be utilized for state level activities and there will be also district level pairings that would be independent of the state level pairings. The activity will be very useful to link various states and districts in annual programs that will connect people through exchanges in areas of culture, tourism, language, education, trade etc. And here the citizens will be able to experience the cultural diversity of a much larger number of states or union territories while realizing that India is one. Now we will see the objectives of the Ek Bharat Shrestha Bharat initiative. The foremost objective is to celebrate the unity and diversity of our nation and to maintain and strengthen the fabric of traditionally existing emotional bonds between the people of our country. Then to promote the spirit of national integration through a deep and structured engagement between all states and union territories through a year-long planned engagement between states. Then to showcase the rich heritage and culture, customs and traditions of either state for enabling people to understand and appreciate the diversity that is India, thus fostering a sense of common identity. Then to establish long term engagements and finally to create an environment which promotes learning between states by sharing best practices and experiences. So that's all regarding Ek Bharat Shrestha Bharat initiative. In this discussion we learned about the objective and importance of Ek Bharat Shrestha Bharat initiative. With these key points in mind, now let's move on to the next part of the news article discussion that is to discuss preliminary practice questions. Let's take up this first question. Which of the following organizations are statutory bodies? First one, Competition Commission of India. Second one, Niti Aayog. Third, Finance Commission. Fourth, Central Bureau of Investigation. Fifth, Central Vigilance Commission. Here, from our discussion itself, we know that Competition Commission of India is a statutory body. Now, coming to Niti Aayog, it is neither a constitutional body nor a statutory body. In 2014, it was announced by the Prime Minister and was created through an executive resolution. So, it is not the statutory body. Now, coming to the Finance Commission, it is a constitutional body established according to the Article 280 of the Indian Constitution and it is not a statutory body. Now, coming to the CBA. Here, CBA is a non-statutory body and it was established by the resolution of Home Ministry in 1963. So, it is not a statutory body. Then comes Central Vigilance Commission. Here, it is a statutory body unlike CBA. Here, note that both CBA and Central Vigilance Commission were established by the recommendations of Santanam Committee on Prevention of Corruption. In our discussion, we discussed Competitive Commission of India was established by a special committee recommendation. Could you remember? Comment the name of the committee in the comment section. So here the question asks for correct statement. Here Competition Commission of India and Central Vigilance Commission alone are statutory bodies. So the correct answer for the question is option A, 1 and 5 only. Now moving on to the second question. With reference to Ek Bharat Shrestha Bharat initiative, consider the following statements. First statement, the nodal ministry for Ek Bharat Shrestha Bharat is the ministry of education. Second statement, one of the objectives of this initiative is to promote the spirit of national integration. Coming to the statement one, yes, the statement is correct. The nodal ministry for Ek Bharat Shrestha Bharat initiative is the ministry for education. Then the second statement, from our discussion itself, we can find the statement is correct. Apart from this statement, there are also four other objectives which we have discussed in today's analysis. Kindly go through it. Here the question asks for incorrect statement. So the answer for the question is option D, neither one nor two. Displayed here is the main question for you today. 
go through the question write your answer and post it in the comment section with this we come to the end of the video if you like our analysis please like comment and share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to shankar ias academy youtube channel thank you